Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. This is why I am bullish on silver. Let's explore. And when I say bullish on silver, I'm not talking about a crazy figure like $1,000 per ounce or $100 per ounce or even $50 per ounce. In fact, you'd be hard pressed for me to make any kind of prediction anywhere above $40 an ounce. However, earlier this year, I made a prediction that silver before the year was out would wind up somewhere between $30 and $35 per ounce. And I have stubbornly stuck to that prediction. You've heard me talk about multiple times throughout the year, as we've seen the price of silver, well, drop fairly dramatically over the course of the year, especially when we saw about $29 silver last year, and we saw it rise and spike up fairly dramatically from a big pullback uh, where everybody ran to the safety of cash during the pandemic. But I believe that we won't really see that again, although we might see an example of it to a small, on a smaller scale, which means we might see a dip in silver prices in the ETF markets. But nonetheless, we are seeing premiums uh, go up for silver, and I think we're going to see it uh, ramp up again. But that's for a different reason. Uh, but I believe that really there's no scenario in my mind, other than what I just mentioned, we might have little dips here and there, and especially with, uh, you know, in the paper markets or in the stock market, the ETFs, where we may see some people run to the safety of cash again. But I believe there's really no scenario where silver won't rise in price. Let me say that again, because I think it's very important, because I've looked at this and studied this, and I'm going to talk a little bit about in this video, that I don't see any scenario or situation uh, over the uh, over the long, over the medium term, I'm not talking about long term. I'm not talking about wealth preservation here. I'm just talking about any scenario where where silver will fall in price or won't rise in price. Um, and by the way, uh, understanding fully that we're going to see some dips here and there, but a lot of this comes to us from well, what's going to be happening with uh, connectivity and electronics. And this is an article that is from the Silver Institute that says silver's role in global connectivity is expected to grow 10% from 2020 to 2025. Well, some question the, the, uh, the validity of the Silver Institute, and I can understand that. Apparently, there was some uh, situation where they kind of um, didn't take into account some numbers that they did from last year's uh, annual report. And so people kind of question the authenticity of some of the data that comes out of the Silver Institute. And this is a predictive analysis. So take that into account as well, too. But we're going to look at this and see what, what they're talking about here and kind of expand it out in a general sense, even if it's, those numbers aren't exactly uh, correct. We're going to look at a chart here momentarily. But we have seen the use of silver and electronics and electrical applications uh, excluding photovoltaics is forecast to rise from 224 million ounces in 2020 to 246 million ounces in 2025. That reflects a 10% increase. Now, 2020 was a very low year, and we'll see that in a chart here below uh, or later on in the video. This is underscoring Silver's role in emerging technologies, according to a recent report published by the Silver Institute. Today, silver is found in nearly all electronic devices. Uh, with the greatest electrical conductivity of all the metals, silver is playing a critical role in the latest technological advancements. Silver's inherent conductivity is an important asset in the miniaturization of electronics, allowing electrical currents to flow in even the smallest semiconductors and computer chips. In the newest of the Silver Institute series of market trend reports, um, produced by CRU International Limited, the London-based consultancy, the findings highlighted that silver is playing an important part in providing increased access to information, 
global markets and communication, and as a result, boosting productivity, reducing waste and inefficiencies, strengthening supply chains, which we're having a problem right now. It's very weak, but that's for other reasons, mainly the pandemic and also uh, uh, regulations and the like that are and mandates that are making the way across the nation. It allows for greater automation and spurring economic activity. This is especially notable as the pandemic has caused a dramatic uptick in the number of employees working from home and students learning remotely. So you, when you have more of that connectivity from home and, and uh, more devices and things will need to be updated or purchased to make that happen. Um, radio frequency identification devices, wirelessly connect objects for tracking, monitoring, and data collection. The logistics of supply chain industry have had high adoption of RFID tracking systems to monitor their assets through air, rail, road, or ship. Healthcare has also benefited by allowing workers to discover real-time location of life-saving medicines and equipment. Projected usage of silver for RFID is expected to increase as much as 400% through the next nine years. Silver is integral to the applications such as the expansion of 5G communications technology and the joining of once unintelligent goods to a greater ecosystem through the Internet of Things. The network of historically non-communicative physical objects that are now able to relay information. Common example is home thermostats and the ability to control them with a smartphone or other device. Not only that, but you also have security camera systems up on the rise where you can have these security systems really without any monthly fee essentially tied to them. And many more things are being connected to the internet these days and silver will take a uh, prime role there. It's off taken electronics and electrical applications will benefit from the global green revolution's need for additional power distribution to connect renewable power, off grid energy storage, and increasingly the installation of electrical vehicle charging stations. And so when you think about those things, um, a lot of that depends on, well, you would think the economy, but a lot of it does not, in a sense, as well. For instance, the current administration, I believe, is doing things that are hurting the economy. But what they want to do with some of their mandates is to increase spending for um, uh, renewable energy sources and also for what they call the green energy projects, which will include solar and a lot of these things that will require more silver for those initiatives. And uh, so that way, demand on silver is going to increase either way, whether the economy improves or not. And, uh, and inflation is a part of that as well. And so we'll talk about inflation here in a moment. But just looking at the demand of silver uh, in electrical and electrical applications in millions of ounces, according to the CRU, as noted uh, in the Silver Institute report here, we can look back in the past and see how it's grown uh, fairly strong uh, from 2015 up through 2018. Uh, ironically, we saw a pretty big drop in 2019, which is before the pandemic, and then a massive drop in 2020 because of the pandemic. But if you look at the rate of growth between 2015 and 2018, uh, the CRU is pretty much has it growing at a faster rate uh, from this year all the way up through 2025. Um, now, how accurate is that? I don't know, but my guess is it's fairly accurate representation uh, or predictive analysis that they're using for this. Now, usually with predictive analysis, you kind of interject data into a model and you know what they say about that kind of thing, garbage in, garbage out, correct? But my guess is, is there was some probably good factors that they're taking into account here as to where this is going to head. And a lot of this is probably, in a sense, recession proof. And um, the demand for silver is going to go up for electrical and electronic applications. This does not take into account photovoltaics, which is going to be another driver which is going to increase as well. So I believe that we will see increased demand for silver in the coming years. Now, whether or not it is at this rate is anybody's guess. 
although I believe their guess is probably fairly accurate. But uh, again, we don't know. Let's just assume it's not. We know that it's going to increase. We also know this. We know that primary silver mines are dwindling in, in their um, uh, productivity of getting silver as a primary source. A lot of these mines out there now are essentially um, mining silver as a byproduct of other metals. There is very few cases. I've talked about some of them on my channel um, where more some of these mid-tier uh, silver miners are trying to uh, get silver uh, out of Mexico and other places where there's a lot of it. Um, but that's basically most of the silver, primary silver mining is in Peru and Mexico. There's other places too, but it's, it's less silver is being produced as a primary uh, mining product as opposed to a secondary mining product. Um, that's something to take into account too. However, as the economy improves, um, or if it does improve, you will see more silver mined um, and to meet that demand. Uh, now, if the economy does not improve, and it continues to falter, well, you're going to be, you're going to see silver rise in price, I believe, uh, as a hedge. Um, in other words, a hedge against economic instability. Essentially, it will rise as a monetary metal, in a sense, um, as, as, as something to protect yourselves as an insurance policy. If the economy does improve, we will see silver rise as a commodity, as a metal that we see here um, for with the with its great demand for um, electronics out there and I believe either way we're going to see that demand it may stifle a bit if the economy starts to lose track and, and continue to fall but I believe the price will continue will rise probably either way the timing of that is what we don't know uh, when or how that will occur um, I thought we would see thirty dollars at least by the end of the year at least touch on that price we still could. We have about two months left for the end of the calendar year. Um, but there's a lot of potential for it to rise. Now, um, that is why I am bullish on silver. Um, and I believe I'm under both scenarios. Um, and But I could be wrong. There's a lot of different factors that affect the price of silver. And I may not be taking into account one of those factors that um, could come into play from the two macro uh, economic analysis factors that I've listened to, that I've listed here. But overall, I think those will drive that price of silver up. Uh, and that is the spot price up. The, the bullion that we buy, um, whether it be bars or coins or rounds, um, I believe the premiums will continue to rise on those, especially for coins, especially for sovereign government issued coins and especially eagles and we're seeing a separation a continued separation between physical price and spot price that is the premium that premium is growing and i think it will probably continue to grow especially since we have inflation going on inflation is driving some of those premiums as well as supply issues so uh, those are the reasons why i believe that i am that silver is going to rise and I think it will rise with the spot price. It will rise with the premiums. Either way, if you are stacking silver, I believe if you have to sell it, even if it's generic silver, you're probably going to get a little bit above spot for it um, in most cases down the road. We'll see how it plays out. But nonetheless, there that is the main reason why I am bullish on silver. What do you think? Where do you see... where? Poke holes in my theory. What do you think? Because um, I, I could be wrong. There could be something I'm missing. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.